I'm Bob Kinsey, and I'm the Green Party candidate for United States Senate in Colorado. And I want to tell you about a nonviolent revolution by which you and I and all of us in the Green Party and who want to be in the Green Party can change the way we do politics and civic life here in Colorado and perhaps through that the whole nation. Isn't that a nifty hat I got here, a sunflower and the peace sign? Those are some of the major issues that we in the Green Party talk about. That is preserving our environment, which is the very envelope that we live our lives, uh, make it possible for us to live our lives. Uh, the flowers, the plants, the trees, the air we breathe, the clean water that we need in order to live uh, healthy lives. Uh, and in order to be able to grow the food that we need. And the other issue is peace, uh, the issue of violence in the world. I'm talking about a nonviolent revolution. Right now, our politics is controlled by two corporate parties. What do I mean by that? I mean that there are two parties which, according to the uh, prevailing myth, the story is that the only way we can live in this country is to have two parties. That's not mandated by our Constitution. It's not mandated by our state Constitution. In fact, we can have as many parties as we'd like. Let me give you an example of how growing the Green Party and making it a viable political party in the state uh, can change things to balance that, that corporate dominance. If you look at this chart over here, you'll see that uh, there's two pie charts. And on the left-hand side is the current situation. You'll see a little tiny green party wedge there. You'll see a huge white section called independent. And you'll see another little white section that represents some of the other political, small political parties in the state. And then you'll see a third, about a third each, Democrat and Republican. Well, the Democrat and Republican party gather and they're already gathering in millions and millions of dollars to run their campaigns, to, to put shows on like this, portraying uh, at great expense uh, their candidates as uh, uh, wonderful, beautiful people who are on your side and uh, want to do things right for the state. But the money that pays for those ads that runs that particular kind of campaign comes from corporate America, whether it's Democrat or Republican, huge amounts of money. And those candidates are beholden then to those corporate interests, which um, then uh, drive the, w the decisions they make. For instance, behind me, there's a poster uh, uh, showing um, the Green Party stance, which is that we should end the occupation of Iraq, end the war in Afghanistan, and bring our troops home and stop uh, occupying the rest of the world and thinking that military force and military action will solve the problems of the world or can build a nation. It costs us a million dollars a trooper in Afghanistan, and we just added 30,000 more troopers to uh, the uh, contingency in Afghanistan right now a huge expenditure, additional expenditure. Where does that money go? To the corporations who supply them with their needs while they're there. And in the process, uh, committing what I consider to be and which many people consider to be atrocities in the, in the name of the United States uh, because of the impossible situation in which those troops are placed. The Green Party wants to bring people home and this war, but it, of course, is profitable to corporate interests in this country. And so the money flows, and so the candidates are chosen, and so you get to choose between two corporate candidates who, uh, therefore, whose votes and, and perception of things uh, talks about national defense or national security in terms of uh, military power, military expenditures, and military deployment. Uh, we need candidates who see the world differently. We need candidates provided to us by another party. I say the Green Party. Look at the second pie chart there. If the independents were to join the Green Party, at least a certain portion of them, we could grow to the place 
where we would become equally winnable in the state of Colorado. It only takes 34% in a three-way race to win. Only takes 26% in a four-way race, theoretically, to win an election. Uh, and there is nothing that is required that it be a 50% uh, majority in order to win, as there is in the presidential campaign, unfortunately, thanks to our um, outmoded electoral col college system. But in the state of Colorado, that is not the case. You vote for a representative for U.S. Congress. You vote for a U.S. Senator. You vote for people in the state legislature. It's not required that you have a 50% vote. You have to have the plurality that it takes to win. Look at that chart. I'm saying if you're an independent voter, then you're not telling you're not telling the parties what kind of candidates you want. You'll just say, I'll choose between whatever you offer me. You're stuck with their offerings. And if they're coming from corporate parties, that's what you're stuck with. What if we had a third party, a green party, not dependent on corporate money, refusing to take corporate money in their campaign activities, uh, a third candidate who is not a, a corporate candidate? Then you would have a, a third choice. I recommend to you the Green Party as a third choice, but you do have a choice on any, any time you register to vote, you can check a box, and there are a number of boxes here you can check, not just the Democrat or Republican, and you don't have to stay independent where you make no statement whatsoever about what kind of candidates you want, what kind of issues you want to support. So why stay independent when your first vote can be a vote for a political party, for the green 10 key values, one of which is nonviolence, one of which is local economics. There's another issue that we could talk about that the Green Party is concerned about, local economics, instead of the uh, too big to fail banking and huge uh, uh, international corporate kinds of economics which are so uh, operate in such unsustainable ways on the planet. Uh, take, for instance, the hemp plant and the conventional wisdom. Both sides, both parties are scared to even investigate this idea, but the hemp plant would be a wonderful economic boon to Colorado agriculture and, uh, and, and provide all kinds of locally made products uh, here in Colorado. That, that issue is off of the screen because the two corporate parties uh, control the debate and they won't take a stand. They want to not look too far away from what the conventional wisdom and accepted mode of conversation is. If we can build the registration of the Green Party to a place where it is equal in size to the Democrats and Republicans, it's anybody's game and you got three choices instead of two, and one choice that's not uh, owned by corporate money and corporate power. What do you get? You get the Republicans, they get us into a war in the Middle East. You get the Democrats, we're still at war in the Middle East. We're still using uh, military power. What do you get? You get Republicans who are Wall Streeters, and then you get Democrats who continue the bailout of the wealthy fat cat gamblers on Wall Street. You get the same thing, don't you? We want, we want a government that has the interests of the people and the planet uh, as their first priority and not the interests of uh, corporations. The Supreme Court has in a way, legislated. This conservative Supreme Court has legislated that corporations are persons. Watch the money flowing into this election cycle. I'm going to have to run against that money, but that's not what I want. I want you and your votes and your friends' votes. Get in the Green Party and let's have a nonviolent revolution and change the way we do politics in Colorado. I'm going to bring you back. Our future's on the line. So come and join us on election day.